So I've spoken about conceptually social media, what it is, how it might be useful and such. And as I said, I in general have to teach concepts that could apply to some degree to everyone. But I, I'm always still curious about what people's goals are for the class. So I'm going to give you a, a link to a document um, where you can contribute to. I've got a Google Doc, which means that you will all be able to connect to it. And I'm going to ask you to connect to this file and add a little bit about uh, about yourself, about what your business is, and what you're trying to get out of social media. This is optional, of course, because there's nothing about grades or anything like that. And it'll be public for us here in the class. So if you'd like to do this, I, I, I hope that you do. You don't have to do this, but here's what you need to do. Uh, go to the computer. We're going to go back to the network folder. So minimize everything and go back to computer at the top left. You will open again the classroom data drive Z again. You will go again back to the classroom data at the top. And then you'll go back to our class, the social media crash course. Open that folder. And there's a brand new file that I added. You need a copy of this. It's called Add Your Site. So copy that file to the desktop. Don't just double click it. You want to copy it to your desktop. Just drag it to your desktop. Once you get a copy of that onto the desktop, then you can open it. And what I've got in there is a link. You need to copy and paste this link into your web browser. This will be a file that everyone can connect to. Add what your business is about and how you'd like to use social media. So once you copy that link into your web browser, you will see a screen that looks something like this. You see everyone's connecting. Everyone's a little critter up here. You want to go below the line over here. We're going to step on each other's feet for a moment. Yes, just go to the very end and press enter like five or six times, because we're going to write on top of each other's. So whoever logged in there, you want to go down here. Not here, you want to go down there, press enter. It's going to be a little chaotic for the first time, but everyone's going to go down to their own spot. So just pick a spot down there after the example. Uh, you can uh, put your name, what your business is, what you're trying to get out of it. Again, this is going to be public. So. Um, Everyone will be able to see this. We want to keep it uh, in terms of uh, safe for work in public. You just go down there to the bottom somewhere and add a little spot if you're having any trouble there. Let me know, but take a moment to do that, and then we'll discuss in a moment.
says, I don't understand what's going on, but your name, what your business is, yeah. I'm talking about the sex. All right, everyone, we'll say five more minutes at about 8.25. I'm going to lock the document for a moment, and then we'll talk about what we wrote here. And I like to do this activity because, uh, again, everyone uh, comes in here for the purposes of using some social media, and I kind of want to brainstorm a little bit with people. So whatever you wrote here, um, if, you, if you participated in this, I'll comment on these things at about 8.25, a couple more minutes. I'm going to lock the document, and then uh, we'll talk about it.
All right, everyone, I'm going to close the document in a little bit less than one minute. Uh, you will still be able to access this document with the link, but I'm going to close it in a moment for no more changes. So all of us connected to this collaborative document in Google Docs. And since you're not logged in, every, everyone gets a, a, a random little animal. So someone in here was a coyote, someone was a mink, an orangutan, a walrus, a kraken. I think it'll tell you who you were if you hover over your own icon, your own color. Anonymous walrus. Someone's a skunk. If you are logged in with with a Google Docs account, it'll say your name. But because uh, this is just with the anonymous link, um, everyone's a little anonymous animal. Okay, so let's take a moment to see what we've uh, what we've got here. I gave the example first of all at the top, bakery. I've got a fictional bakery. If you've taken my other classes, I'm always talking about Victor's Bakery, and people have asked me, "Is it real?" You keep talking about it. No, it's not real. This is for the purposes of the class. Now, my ultimate goal here is I want to use social media to sell my cupcakes. So obviously, I can't send a cupcake through a tweet, or I can't send a cupcake through an Instagram post. I have to figure out how to use social media to reach my audience. So this will not be an exhaustive brainstorming session at this point, uh, but I will throw out a couple of ideas here and there. Um, and we'll see how we can refine these as the time goes on. But just as an example for this first business here, I want to sell cupcakes. OK, well, these cupcakes, let's say I am. Uh, I have a business on Main Street, so the idea is that I want people to come to my business on Main Street to buy the cupcakes. Let's say I'm not selling them on my online shop. They need to buy in person. Well, that means I need to bring people to my location. So I need to think about how I can use social media to bring people to my location. That, of course, will exclude a lot of people. Let's say I have followers in London, but I'm in San Diego. So this, of course, won't work for people outside of the, of the area. But using social media, we're going to cover Facebook and Twitter, but I'll mention other networks if you're interested in further learning. Uh, let's say uh, I wanted to use uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook has a feature known as, what are they called again? Uh, promotions? I should have double-checked. Um, is it called promotions or um, let's call it promotions? But there's a feature in Facebook called promotions, which sounds exactly what that is. Uh, set up a post with a pretty photo and an enticement to visit the store in person. Like a percentage off if you mention the post. So this just basically comes from the real world in that if I were to have a flyer, I'm going around the neighborhood and putting a flyer on people's door, and it says, get 10% off your carpet cleaning if you use this coupon. So I'm giving away a physical coupon in the real world. In the digital world, I have a way, like in Facebook, to create a digital flyer, so to speak. And we will see how to do it later. But I can have a promotion in Facebook, which is free. The word promotion makes it sound like you have to pay. It is free. And I can set it up that then um, people will get the percentage if they use that coupon in, in person. So 
we'll cover more ideas. But here's Facebook using promotions, having some sort of percentage. You have to decide, of course, if that's valuable or not. I've dealt with clients where they say, no, I'm never going to give any percentages off of anything. I'm losing money. And that's true to various degrees. But you may want to get the ball rolling with something for free in the beginning. And you run that for a short amount of time, one week, one month, whatever. And then once you start get, getting the ball rolling, you can have word of mouth and so forth. So let's see over here. This one sounds interesting. So Roberta, uh, tequila tour, wine tour in Mexico. I want to use social media to sell these tours. OK, good. So. Here we've got um, a, a tour. So this is an example of a physical thing. You can't give this tour away on the internet. You, I guess you could do virtual tours online, but that's no fun. Then you can't taste the, the tequila. So this is another example where you want to bring people to a location. What I said up here about having this Facebook promotion with a percentage off, that might work. Here's some other ideas. Let's say we use Instagram. Instagram lets you do video, short video. So Instagram, short preview video of the tour. This takes the effort of recording the video. And yeah, we've all got phones probably, and they can record video probably. And there's a difference between just turning on the camera and looking at everything and posting it. That might be OK. It takes more effort and more time and more expertise to record a cool shot plus another cool shot, plus music, plus narration. That takes a lot of effort. But that's a possibility. A short preview video of the tour. Happy people laughing and smiling and drinking, and then another shot of something else, music in the background. And at the end, it mentions, visit our website for more information. At the end, visit our website. And then, of course, the website address. I don't know your address, but I'll just put tequilatours.org. Use it on our website for more info. It's going to be very hard for the person to like buy that tour right there. But bringing them back to the website, where it shows even more information and the prices and the packages and all of that, and maybe a phone number or however you sell the, the tour, bringing them back to your website. On many of these networks, you can put a video. On most networks, you can put a video. Just thought there. Instagram, short video, but guiding them back to the website. Any questions or comments? People are free to also comment or opine on any of this. Um, that would work with YouTube as well. That would work very well with YouTube as well. The good thing about using YouTube is that YouTube gives you more time. Instagram, I think, is limited to one minute, maybe two. It's pretty short. But I could do a longer tour. And even if I do a 30 minute tour, that's not going to beat the real thing. And YouTube will work for the longer video. So Instagram for shorter video, YouTube for longer. But the idea is still to bring them back to the website. That could help, yes. If you, The longer you keep people on the site, the more you keep them coming back. That is helpful. The downside of putting your longer videos on your own website is that you have to pay your provider for more space and bandwidth. If we use Instagram or YouTube, for all intents and purposes, they have unlimited space, unlimited bandwidth, and you can embed the video that you have on YouTube back on your site. So on a technical level, you don't have to have your video uploaded to your site. You could have it uploaded to YouTube and embed it onto your site and get people to your site. Okay, Veronica, so custom sewing and alteration. Want to use social media for selling sewing services. Okay, so this is another example where the where the product again is a physical thing. Um, are these alterations uh, so people are going to bring their clothing and you will alter it at, at the shop, right? Yes. Okay, good. So this is another example of bringing people in to a physical location. Um, we can use here, you might not think about it 
in these terms, but uh, Yelp is a sort of a social network as well. If we define a social network as a place where you post content and get reactions, Yelp is a social network, YouTube, there's a lot of social networks. The big idea with Yelp, however, what's, what's Yelp or what's important about it? Reviews. So you can think about using Yelp. There's reviews. Um, there's also offers on Yelp. Most of these offers on Yelp, however, are not free. Uh, that does take that investment, so just think about that. But at least what you can use for free is uploading examples of work. People themselves can give a review uh, or upload photos of a business. But me as the owner, I can also upload photos and text about my products, my goods and services. I can sort of guide the conversation about, look at this before and after uh, job. So I've got examples of work before and after alterations. It's hard for people to see how good the work is if you only show a result, the after. So if you can have a photo of the garment before and after, that's something to display. As you're building reviews on Yelp, you can add the Yelp badge to your website. That's a little icon that will show up on your website that says a uh, five-star reviews. We have five-star reviews on Yelp. Um, for many of these um, services, a review site like Yelp is so useful because there's plenty of other web designers, there's plenty of other restaurants, there's plenty of other realtors. So if I've got reviews on Yelp that show how good I am compared to the competition, that gets me more traffic. So whatever I might mention elsewhere probably can also be applied to anyone else. So video, I can also do video on Instagram showing the work being done and uh, having the link back to the website and so forth. So an idea, an idea here for this business is Yelp, but Instagram or whatever would also work. Questions or comments or anything else? Yelp is definitely something to think about because it's uh, more and more people use it. Something, sometimes people say, well, it's fake. All those reviews they pay for them, they're fake. Even if you discount 50% of them, uh, I'd be comfortable saying 50% are real. Well, the more reviews that there are, the higher that 50% is. If there's seven reviews, three and a half of them are fake. I don't, I don't believe the rest of the three. But if there's 20 reviews, 10 reviews, I can believe. If there's 30 reviews, 15, I can believe. If there's 140 reviews, I believe all of those reviews. The, s the less reviews that they are, yeah, the more possibility they're fake or I asked my mom to give me a review and such. But the more reviews that there are, the more real they are. OK, so Charles podcast, gain more listeners, go forth and adult. Uh, so this is maybe like ideas for um, just like life hacks and such? Or sure. <laughs> so ideas to kind of give people tips and advice and stuff like that podcast. So uh, gaining more listeners. Uh, podcasting is something that I would cover. As I said, this class is, is often three parts long. On part three, I do cover podcasting. Part three, next semester, when we have the time for three parts, we would cover podcasting. Podcasting is basically internet radio. You listen to shows on the internet. So you want to gain more listeners here. Let's say we're going to use Twitter. Use Twitter search on hashtags of the topic of the week to find people interested in that topic. We'll see that when we log into these networks, they have a way to search inside of them. 
you can do a search all over the internet on Google or Yahoo or Bing, whatever. But you can do a search inside of Twitter to only find people on Twitter. You can do a search on Facebook to only find people in Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So we will see. We can search in Twitter a hashtag, which is a, a keyword. Short answer, a hashtag is a keyword or topic. And uh, you can search on Twitter or any of the networks, what are the keywords related to what we're talking about on this episode? Let's say finance. Um, how, to, how to save your money after your first paycheck uh, when you get a real job. So you could search hashtag investing, finance, savings. You can search those sorts of keywords related to money and you'll find people tweeting, you'll find people talking about that topic. We then reach out directly to those people. How, we'll, we'll see how we do that, but reach out directly to those people regarding your, hash, your, your podcast. This is sort of like in the real world, um, I have the radio show, so I'm going to wander around downtown, and I overhear someone talking about uh, finance. I, I never have enough money by the end of the month. Well, my radio show is about finance, so it's like me in the real world walking up to them and saying, hey, have you heard about my radio show about finance? Social media, digitally, it's the same thing. You're going to overhear, sort of, you're going to overhear people's conversations on social media, and you're going to tweet to them, you're going to talk to them and say, have you heard about my podcast? Here's the link, check it out. And we'll see how to do that with with finesse and efficiency when we get to the networks. So searching in a network a topic will find the people talking about the topic for you to contact them directly. A power As a power user, we will see how we can search for multiple topics at once or in different individual searches and just search for a bunch of topics at once. Okay, Lizanne, freelancer, I want to start working from home, learning these tools to help me get. May I ask what you would be doing at home? What would be the work at home to get what kind of clients and such? Specifically, uh, it just it, you you probably have the idea yourself, but to me this this still sounds very very broad. I don't quite get what you're trying to do. Like help people with what, like selling or setting up their yeah, like maybe help. She doesn't have the time to sell her her tickets to the to Mexico. And then she wanna pay someone to do that hmm. as part of the work. I want to be the person. It sounds like LinkedIn might be a good network here. Uh, so LinkedIn, if you haven't heard about it, it's the professional social network. This is the one where you're where we're trying to connect with people in a much more business to business sort of way, where people use these other networks, Twitter and all of that, for more of the side of fun and frivolity. LinkedIn is used much more for the professional and business aspect. So LinkedIn, uh, create blog posts. You can write articles and blog posts on LinkedIn. So create blog posts on the topics you would be hired on and post them on a regular basis. So LinkedIn gives us a free place for us to write articles, to write blogs any amount of length with a little bit of design and so uh, this is the question about earlier about or the topic the idea earlier about giving something away for free Forbes is giving away a lot of articles about social media and all of that because ultimately they want for you to pay for whatever Hootsuite was giving away a lot of articles because they want you to buy Hootsuite Buffer is giving away articles because they want you to buy Buffer same thing sort of here 
you will have all of this expertise that you have that you want to get hired for, but you're going to write the short version of top five tips for whatever, or how to do this, or what not to do when you're a first time whatever. So on LinkedIn, people go there because they're trying to find jobs or connect with other people professionally. And LinkedIn is a social network like everything else. You can write content, get replies, get followers and likes and all of that. But we're using it more professionally and business-wise here. So posting them on a regular basis, what I would say here is uh, beginner, one post per month, intermediate, one post per week, advanced, one or more posts per day. That's a lot of writing. Even with the most basic one, that's still great. Because if right now you're doing zero posts per month, per quarter, per year, anything that you do to start off with will help. I get examples of people all the time that once they started up their blog and they started to get some visibility online, the search engines won't find you if you're not doing anything online. So if you're active and putting out content on some regular basis, the search engines can start to find you. The reason that some of these other sites are so popular with so much traffic is because they have a lot of content. Social Media Examiner's got like three articles per day. Well, if you notice, that's like three different authors. It's not one person thinking of three articles every day. It's several, they've got a stable of authors. Uh, so for yourself, it would be uh, possibly thinking about writing some amount of posts on some sort of basis to start to put the, your, your name out there for visibility. One more thing here about uh, length of posts. Beginner, 100 words per article or post. Uh, intermediate, 300 words per article, advanced, 500 and more. The average per post that goes viral? There's no average, unfortunately. It really depends on the content. There are some posts that are very short, 100 words, and they go viral. There are some that are very well written and researched. There are 1,000 words, and nothing happens. So it, it doesn't equate with length, with popularity. It's the content. Okay, so Carl, we've got industrial cleaning, sweeping, power washing, use social media to increase traffic to website and increase SEO to convert contract one-time rental customers. Okay, so you've got this industrial equipment, power washing, um, just the equipment or the or the actual cleaning? Well, there's uh, not selling the equipment, but renting the equipment and doing cleaning, sweeping, power washing. Uh, sometime on a regular basis, weekly, monthly. So you do rent it out and you do the cleaning yourself if they... Correct. Clean. Okay. So the actual do-it-yourself or the you do it for them. Okay. Um, very specialized sort of thing here. Um, so probably like office parks ask you and, uh, and those sorts of businesses. Um, there's a possibility, I have to look at it a little bit more, but what popped into my head is Angie's List, uh, which is hiring contractors. It's a, it's a place for someone to go find, I need someone that does X and Y kind of work. And uh, putting yourself, your business in Angie's List could be a place where people could search for that sort of specialized service that it sounds like you do. I haven't checked very recently uh, about pricing and such. I believe Angie's List is one of the ones that you do have to pay to be in there as a business. I have to double check it. 
but spending a little bit to get your foot in the door to get on Angie's list to possibly get customers, you know, pays for itself. Then you, you further expand there. The typical customer would be like hospitals, um, industrial parks, machine shops, uh, could be cleaner, you know, anything, in, any and all in the industrial parks. Mm -hmm. Kind of thinking a little bit, um, not sure if this would fully focus on that, but there's just so many things on it. Craigslist. People uh, are searching here all the time for uh, a secondhand TV, sure. But people, businesses post here their, their services and, and even job openings. I know so many people, they got a very good job on Craigslist instead of you know going through the usual headhunting business and that sort of thing. So you may post for free on Craigslist what your goods and services are there and people that are kind of thinking outside the box of trying to find another business could find you. So classified, classifies online. What's that? Not quite familiar with that one. It's called, what did you say, Home Advisor? Home Advisor, okay. We might look into that one, um, like Angie's list. Home Advisor, so perhaps there might be another spot to look into to see how it's valuable for your business. But because you've got these either these rentable products or you do the work here's some possible areas to go through and even though the big idea of the class is social media and we're gonna cover Facebook and Twitter uh, I do want to provide something for, for various avenues for for various ideas uh, if my company as a social media marketer were being hired to do social media for anyone uh, we would do this brainstorming in a lot deeper and with more detail. But for us, just to kind of in the time that we have on day one, I like to do this activity to kind of see where everyone is at and general ideas of how social media or web marketing could help. So Juliana, social media consulting and design. I want to use social media for building a portfolio. To gain clients who need to help manage. Okay, one of the big networks that is specifically designed for um, portfolios is called Behance. I think it's Behance.net. Uh, social portfolio. The idea is that you go here, you create an account, you show off your work in the hopes of someone seeing it to then contact you to get hired so um, it's a it's a showcase type of site Adobe owns them so if you know about uh, using Photoshop and all of that Adobe products you can get an, an account there very easily a social portfolio to show off your work to help get hired related freelancer.com <clears throat> same sort of thing create an account show your portfolio set your prices many of these ideas that I'm giving here could be coupled with other ideas I create an account on, on Behance but I'm also going to use Instagram to guide people back to my Behance account so they can hire me there. Or when I mentioned Craigslist, you know, I'm going to use Craigslist to guide people back to my website. Or I'll use Instagram to guide people to my Facebook. So you can cross pollinate, you can connect one network to another to, uh, to pump up another one. So I've got a freelancer account. I'm also going to use my Facebook boosted posts to guide people back to freelancer. There's another one that I can't quite remember at the moment related to kind of freelancer. Uh, one of my colleagues uses it. I can't remember it at the moment. But there's more of these coming out, freelancer.com and such, where 
you set up your account, you show yourself off, and then people contact you and contract you uh, through the network. Fiverr. 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 Upworks. Is it Upwork or Upworks? Something like that. Upwork. Upwork. We'll look it up. Fiverr, although um, you just have to know how many R's are in the name. Uh, so all of these are related somewhat to that. Freelancer, Upwork, Fiverr. Um, this is part of that gig economy, if you've heard of that buzzword. Um, the gig economy that you do things a gig at a time. You set your own price. Um, it often works for this uh, digital stuff. Social media, graphic design work and such. You put yourself on these, the more of them the better and you show your work. The problem is of course getting the ball rolling. So if you don't have clients, I can't show a portfolio. But I need clients to make a portfolio. And my, portfolio my portfolio is empty because I don't have clients. Well this is when you do a little bit of the free work. Um, friends or family, you know, you have an uncle that has a business, make them a logo. Um, and then you start to build a portfolio to put it up here to reach an audience, a paying audience. Okay, so Robert promoting photo services and selling prints online, increasing followers or photo blog. Okay, so um, promoting photo services. So this is another example of um, you have a portfolio somewhere, like at Freelancer, Behance, etc. But then you use something like Facebook. In this example, I would say boosted posts. On all of these net, on most of these networks, you can post content all day long for free. But we will see that we also have the ability to pay the networks for a little bit better results. Just like in the real world, I can put flyers on people's windshields. But then when I pay to put a billboard at a parking lot with a lot of cars, that could possibly be better results. On Twitter and Facebook and all of these, I could be tweeting all day long, posting on Facebook all day long. But if I invest some amount of money, I could reach that audience a little bit more effectively. It could be as little as $1. I have zero followers, let's say but I pay a dollar to Facebook and you reach 120 people. That doesn't mean 120 sales. That means, you know, 1%, 1.2 sales rounding down, one sale. One sale, being hired one time for spending one dollar to boost my post to Facebook, the return on investment is amazing. So people, when they first hear about this, they get so offended. I'm going to pay Facebook to reach an audience. I'm going to pay Twitter. I'm going to pay these networks. That's, that's, that's a ripoff. Yes, it's a ripoff, just like in the real world. I have to pay to put my radio ad and pay to put my billboard and pay, hopefully, minimum wage at least, the person flipping that sign. So in the real world, you're going to pay for marketing, and we don't quite bat an eye to it, and we shouldn't because marketing works. The digital world, we should be aware that it also works for businesses like us to pay these networks to reach a better audience, a bigger audience, a more refined audience or targeted demographic. So Facebook, boosted posts, pay um, fourteen dollars for a two-week ad running and reaching the right demo. Um, I don't know exactly what kind of photography. Let's just say wedding photography. Young couples about to get married. They're on Facebook. On Facebook, as I said, you can search. You can create a post with your great photography, wedding photography, let's say. Pay $14 to run this ad for two weeks. Facebook is going to promote it and show it to the right people. It knows who the right people are because all day long, we are giving away free information to Facebook. And so people are saying, we're going to get married. The big day is coming next week. Look at this beautiful engagement ring. So Facebook knows that, and it's going to show your 
add your photo promotion to those people that you target as young people engaged San Diego you know with keywords and all of that which we'll see how to do when we get into Facebook so this yes yeah all the networks have a way to target people with some amount of money to reach the right people yeah marketers in the real world would would love this marketers in the real world are dying to do this to reach the right audience um, you know we've got uh, water we've got a cola we've got a beer three different things but all from the same company well that same company is promoting the water to certain people at certain places at certain times promoting the beer to certain people at certain places at certain times and the cola to certain people so big companies real companies they know that they have to segment they know that they have to target a certain demographic we using digital should know that too we don't want to just blast out a message to everyone and 98 percent won't care we want to send a message to the right people usually it's not free but it can be very affordable so we've got Julian we have a website that sells products from around the world our desire is to be known enough to increase our image and profit using social media so is this that you do have a, um, a ha you have an online shop people can actually buy online on the website okay so um, this might be a couple of things to do here a, a two-pronged approach blogs writing articles on the products you sell what I would be very interested about is knowing what I'm buying that's very interesting to me to buy international products so I would like to read a little bit about where does it come from what's the history of this product let's say it's some kind of food I would love to know the origins of the dish uh, so writing about the origin ingredients usage of the product coupling that with some sort of boosted or paid let's say Twitter Twitter boosted content so uh, create tweets that link to your blog post on your website I like it looks like the one you've got here 10 by best vanilla Madagascar purchase um, so you've got an article uh, about the item and then you're using a network like Twitter to pay that's the also known as paying, so boosting your content to the right demographic. So a link that goes back to a specific article, not just the main home page, because if you guide people back to the main page, they have so many options that they don't know where to go. So if you tweet an article, pay to show it to more people, the right people, you're going to guide people back to your website on that article and on that article you have buy now you have the button to go to so buttons for buy now or view the catalog and then maybe even a promotion coupon promotion so you're you're writing something educational interesting funny whatever about the product you're also slipping in some sort of promotion if you feel it could be useful. But then you're promoting via social media like Twitter traffic back to that link. So it's kind of a bit of a circuitous route. But ultimately, again, I'm trying to get sales. And that final ultimate conversion is always the hardest. People are going to look at your content, watch your videos, click like, follow you, blah, blah, blah. But then suddenly that buy button is so hard to press. 
So the more you cast this net to target the right people, often through boosting and paying and such, it can guide people to where you want them, to, to the buy button. So, yes, the networks, we can do A-B testing, which is to check, is version A working better than version B? Yeah, these networks, they will give you the ability to, to do some testing. And even if I, a tactic that I could try is I can spend $5, you know, maybe I won't buy a latte today, and I'll spend the $5 to promote something, and the next week I'll spend another $5, and I start to build my data that way, and the networks will tell you this is what worked based on what you've done, and then based on that I can create something better next time. So, we've got a couple more. Olivia, I want to use social media to sell stylist services and products for women's clothing, jewelry. Okay, so you can find plenty of articles that will tell you the main demographic of this network is X, Y, and Z. And the main demographic of this other network is A, B, C. And to some degree they're correct and to some they're not. Meaning that you'll find plenty of articles that will say if you want to reach a female audience, Pinterest. But the thing is that you'll be able to reach just about any <coughs> audience on any network. Easy answer to start off with is that yes, studies show, the data seems to show, Pinterest is one of the ones that, it, that, that has a more uh, female-focused demographic. So, as you're saying here, product, uh, women's clothing, jewelry. Um, think about posting and being active on this female-focused network. You will find a female audience on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook everywhere, yes. But it seems that, organically, on its own, it seems to have grown that the bigger demographic on Pinterest is a female audience. So I might want to go to Pinterest as my first choice of where to promote and where to advertise via boosting your pins. You can easier, more e more easily reach the niche. Uh, here we're saying in general, women's clothing, jewelry, and shoes. If it's part of your company, am I going to focus on a certain age group, a certain income level, a certain aesthetic? Those are still things I can figure out to target a little bit more. And we can uh, promote to those uh, more defined segments to find the right audience. So this one comes back to focusing on a particular network and thinking about paying to reach the right audience. And again, we'll see that many times the same sort of idea, you know, replace Pinterest with Instagram. That would also apply very closely. This is the thing that's good and bad about all of these networks. Uh, the good is that there's so many networks to reach an audience. The bad is there's so many networks to reach an audience. There's so many channels, so much work, so much effort that I have to try. The good news is that once you kind of get a hold of it in one network, you can apply it very similarly to another network. And you'll say, well, if it's so similar, why would I even bother with other networks? People that are on Instagram want to be on Instagram and not on Facebook, not on Twitter, not on Google+, not on Pinterest. People that are on Snapchat want to be where their parents are not. People that are on uh, Twitter want to be where, where that content is, not on Facebook. So it's still uh, up to us to try to reach an audience on these different networks just because we just because it looks similar and, and and it looks the same to us the person that's on a particular network is there for a reason there's very few people that are, that are that are dilettantes and go to every network 
I'm on all the networks just because I need to know about it. But most of us, you know, how many networks do you spend your time on? Probably one or two. So we want to reach more of an audience by our business being on as many as we can muster. And that's why a, a platform like Buffer will help you manage six networks at once. So Ted, trying to figure out how to market online, market anything to start, but eventually sell kitchen stuff. OK, so if we focus there, uh, one of the, the big things that um, we, um, if my company gets hired to do social media, we have to then become enough of an expert in that client's product to do well on social media. And we've been hired to do social media for several kinds of companies restaurants, spas, biotech firms. So we have to become enough of an expert on all of those things to promote their product intelligently. So I would say here, which applies to everyone, competitor analysis. You can pick any network to do this at. And I know it sounds very complicated and fancy. But competitor analysis is We'll say it this way, spying on the competition. On most of these networks, you can see the profiles of your competition. And they won't know that you looked. They will know once you click like or follow. But you can look at most of the content of most of the competition on most of the networks. I can go look at the bakery down the street. So I'm Victor's Bakery, and then John's Bakery is down the street. I can go look at John's Bakery on Twitter and see what they're tweeting, what kind of sales they're doing, what kind of pictures they're doing, what kind of text, what ideas they have. And the point of this is analysis, competitor analysis, not competitor stealing. So use the information you gather on your competition to figure out how you will do uh, things in your own way. Get inspiration. Don't steal. Don't write the exact phrasing that they're doing. Don't copy their picture and use it on your own post. But I see my competition, my, my kitchenware competition, is also posting really fun and interesting photos of all of the products arranged in really fun, interesting ways on the table. I can do something like that. I use my own products, my own table, my own background, my own camera. I'll take photos of the products in an interesting way. And I'm going to post it. Um, I see that the competition is posting uh, short little videos about using the kitchen equipment to bake. I could do something similar. If you are worried about the competition down the street finding out and then getting annoyed, you can always do competitor analysis for someone completely outside of your sphere. I'm in San Diego. My kitchen supplies are going to be here in San Diego. So I'm going to follow someone in LA. I'm going to follow someone in Portland, someone in um, Boise, someone in, in uh, New York, uh, or anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to be competitor directly down the block in the same city. It's just a competitor in the same industry. And. Um, I need to gather that information. That's what we would do if my company was hired. Uh, to do social media for any business, we have to check the competition. And we provide the client that hired us with a 10-page report, or more usually, about the competition. Here's two or three that are very similar to your business. Here's what they're doing. Here's how their logo looks. Here's how they write. They don't use slang. They put links on every post. They do this, they do that for us to understand what they're doing, why they're popular, and then to get inspired for us to do it, but better. So competitor analysis.
Smarty Fox Financial Education Books and Games for Kids. All right, so it seems to be talking about an interesting topic uh, that a lot of kids won't be interested in because it sounds boring, but obviously very important, finance and investing and saving your money. So um, here's an idea where I would have for YouTube. You seem to have a uh, mascot. If you have also the skills to do some animation, you could do some short animated videos. previews of what the books and games are about. You obviously want to sell those books and games, but if you... Can you do funny voices? Do you voice that character? You could do it like that. So you could uh, have some simple sort of slideshow. It doesn't even have to be real animation. It could be slideshows of static images with narration and explaining the games or the books. Short, colorful for kids. On the other side of that also, so short animated videos for, kid, for the kids. And then we've got the longer that's what I'm getting at here, longer detailed versions for the parents. So there's a ver there's a short versions for the kids that might get them excited to then talk to their parents. Hey, daddy, what is this? Buy it for me, check it out. Then the parent can see the longer version of it to see the value as a parent. Uh, so this could be... Um, you know, full animation, it could be slideshows. Maybe real people talking. Yeah, using s uh, Snapchat has, uh, has grown, yes, it could be uh, something viable, although the demographics of, of Snapchat aren't at the moment very focused on kids uh, so you might find an audience you know of uh, uh, younger parents with kids but at the moment the demographic isn't quite there for family content so basically multimedia because I personally am very interested in investing and I've gotten a lot of education in it but it can be a very dry topic and a topic that people push away to the side about like especially younger people well retirement oh that's 50 years away well yeah 50 years away but it will be there eventually and the younger we get kids to kind of understand about money and finance the better but that demographic might be more interested in the animation multimedia aspect of things so video probably will work best Jason, so art promotion, marketing and sales, webinars, classes. Here's where I would say Instagram. Instagram, I have various kinds of content, so plain photo video, you have stories, it's kind of like a slideshow. So it's a very visual network. Um, looking, seeing the, the artwork in that tiny square doesn't um, do the original justice. So this is sort of like the previews, giving a preview of what the, what the art is to get people to uh, further, most likely, go back to the website. So posting multimedia often. And on this one, I would say like uh, several times a week. 
Jose Masvidal often to guide people back to your site. Instagram. Uh, Insta is instant. So it was originally about, I'm going to take a photo quickly, I'm going to share it. It's gotten more complex, but you can still use it in that sort of instantaneous way. we here several times a week. This is not something, like when I wrote about the blogs, and I say the advanced blogs are every week. I mean, the intermediate are, are every week, and the advanced are every day. Those definitely, that's a lot of work, writing that much. Instagram, you could easily post several things per day, per week. It doesn't have to be completely, fully, thoroughly set up and designed and such. It could be photos, short video, on one work. This week, I'm going to focus on one promotion or one work of art with three posts this week. Next week, a different piece with three posts on it. So, um, Instagram is very visual, multimedia, and that's what it seems that you're trying to do here, something very visual. So uh, I would think about Instagram. This document, then, uh, I'm going to put a copy of it in the network folder, if you'd like to look at it to get your piece of the idea. The notes that I've been writing here also, I'm going to put in the network folder in a bit. The videos that I've been recorded, I'm going to upload them. You want to send me an email to get access to that. And so we had some brainstorming, which we'll come back to and apply starting on Thursday. We're going to create some business pages on Facebook on Thursday and start to apply some of this more directly general questions on what we talked about in the document or anything today so very theoretical at the moment more hands-on on Thursday we'll end the lecture at this point if you have any questions until 930 I'll be here then if not you can wrap up I'll turn the printer on in a moment thank you for coming and we'll do it again on Thursday <coughs>